Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Barry Beckham. Let's talk photography with the Canon R5 and the 100 to 500 millimeter zoom lens, but this time with a two times converter. For some years, I've owned a 1.4 converter for my old EF Canon 100 to 400 zoom lens. It would increase the 400 millimeter lens to 560. In truth, that converter wasn't used as much as I anticipated when I first bought it. Recently, moving on to a Canon R5 mirrorless camera, along with the 100 to 500 millimeter zoom, I've been amazed at the stability that in-body and lens stabilization has given me. So much so that I started to think that a converter used with the R5 may be a far more usable combination than my old setup. Well, I took the plunge. So let's take a look at what I found using the Canon RF times 2 converter along with the Canon RF 100 to 500 millimeter zoom. None of the images have been sharpened or cropped. I think it's quite important that you're not seeing just a small part of the frame. I need you to see the whole. The 100 to 500 millimeter zoom does need to be zoomed to 300 millimeter before attaching to the times two converter. The converter slips just inside the end of the lens barrel. And it can't do that if it's not zoomed to 300 millimeter. Once on the camera, the lens cannot be zoomed back any further than 300 millimeter. There's a solid stop when you get to that point, but it's not a problem. So with the converter, it becomes a 600 to 1000 millimeter lens. All the images and video you'll see were handheld, taking general precautions. The usual advice I would give, brace yourself in a steady pose, lean on a fence or a tree or anything else that may help, sit down if you can and make the most of your body's stability. Let's take a look at the results. Here you can see the settings used and three of them stand out. There's the 944mm zoom factor the 20th of a second shutter speed and the 400 ISO, which given the length of the lens is quite a moderate ISO. The lighting I had here was pretty good. So that was in my favor and I was able to sit down and get myself into a little huddle to hold the camera as steady as I could. Also, the bird wasn't moving very rapidly. Nevertheless, given the sharpness of the image, the result is impressive, even if I do say so myself. It was this picture that gave me the idea for this video. So I took a couple of afternoons out to shoot some images and a little slow motion video, all handheld. I should add that I don't have any special skills with handholding, far from it. This black swan signet was quite a long way off, but 944mm was enough to fill the frame with the bird. An 80th of a second is a ridiculous shutter speed for such a focal length lens, or it certainly used to be. Having said that, and as I said a few moments ago, I am shooting in good lighting conditions, i.e. there's plenty of light around, and I'm waiting for the birds to stop making any rapid movements before I fire the shutter. This coot is a little bit closer to me, hence the fact it's not all in the frame. Of course, I could have zoomed back a bit from that 1000 millimeter, but that wasn't the object of the exercise. The image is nicely sharp, which does show the ability of the Canon R5 with that two times converter. By the way, I am using back button focus for all of these images. I do have a video on that subject and I'll link to that below. The aperture you're seeing is generally the lens used wide open. 
The widest aperture of the Canon 100 to 500 mm lens when it's at the 500 mm length is f7.1. But when we attach the two times converter, around two stops will be lost, hence the aperture here of f14. The coot is a smallish bird, so we're a fair distance away here with the lens set at 1000 mm. Once again, I do have a fair amount of light here, hence the shutter speed of 320th of a second. The quantity and quality of the light, plus my ability to sit down and brace myself, is all working in my favour. With this black swan, I've not been quite so fortunate. At first glance, it looks okay, but I've lost critical sharpness in the most important spot. A fortieth of a second was just too ambitious, given the swan was preening its feathers. Their movement when they do this is very quick, and a fortieth of a second shutter just wasn't enough. If we zoom in just a little bit on the same image, we can see evidence that this is movement of the subject and not movement of the camera. Much of the bird is sharp. It's only the head, neck and the feathers that it's preening that have lost the critical sharpness. With this shot, I've got my critical sharpness back and we can see the reasons for it. Firstly, I've zoomed back to 600mm because the swan came closer to me. That takes off a little pressure. I've also pushed up the ISO to 2000, which in turn allowed me to use a 640th of a second shutter speed. Yes, we're going to have a little noise to deal with, but the Canon R5 handles high ISO pretty well and a noise suppression setting of between 25 and 40 in Photoshop or Lightroom seems to work pretty well. Here we're viewing a video clip of the Canon R5, but including the 2 times converter and the 100 to 500 mm lens. I have these video settings applied to a video custom function, so I can switch to them quickly and easily. I'm shooting 4K Scene Intelligent Auto with the high frame rate enabled. This allows this beautiful slow motion, which does add something special to the footage. I must thank my friend Andrew Goodall for putting me onto this type of video shooting. Now here I've zoomed all the way in, but the image stabilization is still working in my favor and doing a remarkable job. A different place here and a different day, and my attention was drawn to a large black bird, but it was too far away for me to identify. But then I spotted this dog, bounding through the shallow water. Here, that one thousandth of a second shutter speed was needed to capture the movement of the dog and create a sharp shot. It was a dog that disturbed the bird, and it took flight. Now it's one thing to capture a bird in flight when you're ready for it to fly, but not when it's already in flight when you first spot it. The bird here is a little bit too far away to make a standalone image with the sort of impact I'm looking for, but the important thing is it's sharp, and I now know it's a cormorant. This coot obviously thinks it's far enough away and safe enough to build a nest but it's in range of my lens here. A four hundredths of a second was enough to capture the shot using f14. Now using 2000 ISO, we are going to get a little noise to deal with, but the first rule of eliminating noise is to make sure you don't underexpose the shadows. If we try to edit detail from dark shadows using a high ISO, it's likely to be a little more problematic. Now this is typical, isn't it? When you have a long lens on, the subject comes in too close. But that does allow some up-close, some personal images. But the thing is, 
Critical sharpness is essential when you're this close to your subject, and 1000mm is pretty close. The bird was reasonably static, so 640th of a second shutter, that was enough to capture the shot, along with the help, of course, of the in-body and lens stability. I like frame-filling images, and I don't want to have to seriously crop to achieve that. It means that you'll have some images where your concentration lapsed and maybe the images are not all critically sharp. We all get a little fatigued, I think, holding a long lens for any time. However, the failure rate with this setup isn't high at all. Most of the shots I discarded were because the bird either turned away or dipped its head in the water. So the big plus using this 100 to 500 lens with the two times converter is that we can shoot away with some confidence and we know we're going to have a healthy amount of images from which to choose from, the vast majority of which are going to be critically sharp. Using the 100 to 500 millimeter lens plus the two times converter, it's one thing with large birds that here we have something a bit smaller. This bird, if Google is correct, is called a Janica, and it's smaller than a pigeon. It's not large in the frame, even though I've zoomed in to 1000 millimeter. The bird was so small, well camouflaged, and a long way away. I had some problems finding it through the lens and focusing on it. Here it came just a little bit closer and you can see the habitat that it likes. It moves quickly across the water leaves but my lens combination has allowed me to capture the shot and sharp too. This white ibis was feeding along Bells Creek. It wasn't that far away but far enough not to be spooked and I had to zoom back just a little bit to 800mm to fit the bird within the frame. I waited until it stopped pacing before taking the shot because the light levels at this time were beginning to fall and my shutter speed was a four hundredths of a second. Here I have much the same settings as before but I had no idea I had captured the bird with its dinner until I saw it on the computer. How they find these things in the mud bank of Bells Creek is beyond me. In this situation, I was in quite strong light. So a reduction to 250 ISO seemed a good gamble here. But I still zoomed in to 1000 mm for this up close and personal style. A shutter speed of 320th of a second is not high for a handheld 1000 mm lens. But I was able to lean on a pretty strong fence here and that, coupled with the camera and lens stabilisation, was enough for a bitingly sharp image. Pelicans are not skittish birds, and they'll often allow us to get quite close. So a lens of this length isn't essential for a shot like this, but these few images have done a great deal for my confidence in this lens and the converter combination. And of course I shouldn't leave out some praise for the focusing ability of the Canon R5 as well. Once I have the zoom lens plus the converter on my camera, I only really need to watch that shutter speed. If the subject I'm shooting is something like this, and I notice my shutter speed is up around three thousandths of a second, I know I can reduce the ISO. Remember, the aperture is always wide open, even though we're seeing it displayed as f11. The bird I'm photographing is still moving, but we're not talking in flight here. It's arguable that I could have gone to a 200 ISO in these conditions and still been able to use a 400th of a second shutter speed, especially when you take into account that the good light that I had was being naturally reflected by the sand. By the way, this bird is called a plover. It's like a pigeon on stilts. 
Can't you tell I'm not a dedicated bird photographer? Now I've been out looking for some more content for this video and I had hoped to capture some smaller birds. But it's still winter in Australia and they're certainly hiding away from me. But I did spot this flash of colour in an otherwise dull forest. It was a long way off as you can see by the focal length of the lens I used and I was on a walkway so there was no way to get any closer. And take a look at the shutter speed here. I'm in a forest here and the light was far less than we've seen with the birds. I would never have taken my previous lens and converter into these situations. I still needed that 1000mm lens to fill the frame as you can see. But if I can see a strand of a spider's web, I think I can claim the image is acceptably sharp. I think it's a fair thing to say that in the past week of me going out to capture images for this video, that already I'm putting the Canon RF x2 converter to more use than I ever did with my old EF converter. It's really a combination of the in-body and lens stabilization of the R5 camera. Then there's the superb servo focusing and tracking abilities, along with our confidence in ISO settings up there around 2000. If we add good exposure techniques and we treat the hand holding of the camera with some respect, we have a winning combination here. There is one other aspect to all of this. We do need good image editing. And I'm going to take a look at that in a future video. So if that interests you, please subscribe, hit that notification bell and you'll be informed when I post that video. But for now, I'll see you later.